Ah, see what's happened then? And this is what happens because the spring's not in there. Shut the door, the plunger's dropped down. It's dropped down a sixteenth of a millimetre, which has then locked the door. Which is probably why someone thought, ah yes, moan like hell at the dealer, or trader, or repairer, and said, it's not working, blah, blah, blah. When you slam the door, this just drops down enough because the spring's not holding it into place. Now, there's been some gibbonry going on in here. Um, I think what the problem actually is, is that there's a spring in the lock mechanism on the handle and it ain't doing nothing because there's no kind of solid action kind of feel to the lock. And so because of that, then someone's overcompensated by adding a whacking great big spring attached to the underside of the plunger um, and massacring the, uh, the mounting plate for the central locking. Now, the central locking itself, if I come back over here, Normally with these, when they're dead, this flops around like a dick in a bucket. And that isn't, believe it or not, it goes that far and then you push it and it clicks into place. And you pull it out and it comes that far and it pops out. Okay, that's normal. That's how they should operate. So if I put power to that, that will pop in and out quite happily. So I think that the actual solenoid itself is good. Now, when I first took this off, it felt like a bag of spanners. And that's because it was either overextended or not extended far enough. By exercising it and pulling it in and out a few times, it's actually behaving itself. So I'm reasonably confident that is in good order. If I look at the rear door catch, bear in mind this is a rear door catch, and it's a front door catch. So here's the lock mechanism here. And what would normally happen is that would stop the catch from undoing. And the spring is there. You can see that's got a nice, even though it's kind of come out of a rusted door, it's got a nice positive action to it. Which this one hasn't. Which is why they put the spring on there to pull the plunger up. Who'd have thought it, eh? Locks. Unlock it. So we unlock it, Richard. There's the unlock. Slam it. Not going to do it now, is it? Locks. Unlocked. Well, you know what I mean. Um, so getting the door out of these things is a piece of piss. Uh, glass up. Two bolts. One bolt. Two bolts. Three bolts. One torque screw. Four bolts, four bolts, one torque screw, okay? Then, once you've got all those out, the frame is loose. Then, holding the glass up, undo three bolts here for the motor. Disconnect the motor, take it out. Motor's then disconnected. You can then raise and lower the glass as you wish, okay? So for safety, push the glass all the way down and lift the frame out. Where he is, over there by that V8. Once the frame is out, Push the glass back up again and slide it off the channels. It don't get much easier than that, really. So that's that's where I am now. And then the next bit I'm going to be doing is I want to take the door catch out. So undo those two screws there. Um, and then on the inside, we go in here. There's the back of the handle. Fork handle. Um, it's got the heater on there, which is what the wires are going to. And uh, then I've got two rods from that directly to the catch itself. So I'm just going to disconnect the rods um, and take out the catch. Uh, I don't need to video it, folks, in all honesty, purely because it's just going to... Oh, yes, I'm not going to video it. And then you've got, on the catch, you've got two screws here, one bolt there, and then the catch should come out of the door. And I'll see you when I've done that. Well, that was a bit of a bastard to wiggle out of the door, I can tell you now. That was a right bastard, um, mainly because a lot of these rods, you can't really disconnect. So as it sits in the door, 
it sits in the driver's door that way around if you get my drift so it sits on the outside edge this kerfuffle here is all to do with the uh, central locking so that's central locking that then will also be locking and look how loose it all is um, and then we've got this one which is the door release catch and the spring that we want to have a look at is that one just there now actually looks like it is disconnected yeah it's broken off there we are so that's the spring and it's snapped which is why that don't work what i need to do next is to probably drill that rivet there such that i can get because what you've got here this rod here central locking so you can ignore that one this one here is actually for the the, yeah, the door control and that one goes to the back of the handle fork handle and then the other one which went to there which is that rod is the opening catch so it's a little bit more straightforward than the uh, the back door lock <laughs> you can say a little bit more straightforward You're having a laugh really aren't you um so yeah spring is needed and i don't think you could put the spring in while the uh while the assembly is there but i'm going to investigate this uh, but that's that's the little pesky bastard that's broken. Um, there's a lot of white grease and so forth in here. So someone's obviously tried to fix it um, and floundered. So I think what I might need to do here, I'll probably get away without that. I'm wondering if I if I'm what I'll do is I'll, I'll get the, the various rods into the right sort of place. I'll figure it out, then I'm going to come back and show you how I managed to figure it out. Is that a deal? That sounds like a deal to me. Win-win. I've ordered up a bunch of springs um, because I haven't got any here. And I thought, ah, I've got a door. So I've just stripped down a door in order to get the complete lock mechanism out of it. It's a 1989 car. This is the customer's lock. This is where the spring is missing from here. If you remember, that was the remains of it. So looking at this lock here, one end of the spring goes, if I can hook it there, you can see on this arm here where the end of the screwdriver is. That's one end of the spring. The other end of the spring is there. And it looks like you could fit the spring without actually dismantling it, which is great news. So, yeah, I'm probably going to try and take this spring out because I've ordered a load anyway. But uh, yeah, just when you operate the lock, obviously it gives you a little bit more or less, less kind of movement on the spring. Um, so I'm going to see if I can hook this spring out and install it into there. Well, if I break it, I've got more on order. Um, but it'd be nice if I could put that entire thing back in the door and work it. That's a bit more visible then. So I've just taken a little bit of the rubber um, the, the kind of insulation piece off and you can see the end of the spring there and the other end of the spring is on the other piece there so I'm going to see if I can get this off um, I'll show you right it's not very clear um, I'll do my best to show you how these little springs go in so you need two lugs and it goes in here on the lock side and you see how floppy that all is now I find it easiest to put it onto the moving part first and foremost. Um, you kind of have to twiddle it around a little bit in order to get it into the hole because um, you've got like a, a dog leg. Um, it's a lot easier putting it on than it was getting it off the other one. Uh, but I thought I'd show you because I really couldn't be asked to wait for the next one to arrive. I want to get this car back together again. So I've got the spring onto one arm into that hole there and I can let it go now. What I then need to do is to move the lock around because uh, that's the easiest way then to get the other half of the spring on which is dropped down there. Right now if I move the other half of the spring up here now you can see that tang there needs to go into there. Now the easiest way I've found of doing this is actually to grab it with a pair of pliers and manoeuvre it down and into the hole it's right on the edge of it there and then give it a 
flick and it goes in right that's that's the easiest way that i found of doing this now you'll notice there's a nice solid spring action so that's how you fix those springs how about that right put it all back together again now oh dear 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 dear, dear. white grease love it so does it lock on both sides fucking does beautiful and unlocks on both sides nice and positive action on that other one over there that's good because I can put that door card back on now and this door card can go back on again look at that works beautifully perfect and that's pretty much exactly where it wants to be.